Chicago. Forget the blizzards in Colorado, the slick glistening slopes, the vast crags and glaciers of Alaska, and the cerulean blue waters of Greece. I've fallen in love with Chicago. Parades and polkas serenade me as my eyes turn green like the Chicago River in March when I lift my face to the wind. The city's steely skyscrapers, bridges, and L trains are mirrored in my pupils. It is the only real place I know, a city built by engineers and Pullman porters, by accountants and construction workers, by LaSalle bankers and Southside Irish, as Chinatown Square dancers wearing black get ready to break into a routine. A city lost in its own fog. You find your way around by landmarks, Buckingham Fountain, Willis Tower, Carson Perry Scott's, Buddy Guy's Legends, Gino's East Pizza, as protesters skirt City Hall, their signs telling windy politicians what they really want. She will not break your heart, no matter how hard you fall at her feet. She will pick you up and place you at the foot of the Poetry Foundation, Superior Street. She will take you every single magnificent mile to her stores and museums where Van Gogh and Renoir meet the wa water tower and the yellow house meets back of the yards where a lone cellist plays outside water tower, a young boy offering a tip to the busker. Where Palmer House Bellboys shake hands with Jackson Pollock and streetwise vendors where islands of violets freckle sidewalks and flags salute soldiers and immigrants. Where businesses own each block, but a man can still make bubbles on Columbus Drive, offering passersby a little joy in the world. Where dozens of languages pepper the streets, tourists snap photos and get lost in Lake Michigan's real estate, and seagulls squawk freedom and fiesta as they soar over a giant lighted Ferris wheel. Where jazz perfumes the air, where mayors wink at police, and skateboarders practice at Federal Plaza, and the homeless still bless you as you walk by, whether or not you throw a coin in their cup. The Soul in Chicago's Streets The soul of a city is known not only through its architecture, the pace at which it's grown, its history, achievements, atrocities, and lore. Intuit it more from the way its people respond to what goes on in its streets in the day-to-day, -to, -day, to the magic and, and the horror, the well-off and the poorer, the celebrated and the ignored. Much depends upon the hour and the place, the kindness in the face that one looks into as in a mirror that repels or would embrace. We march to reassemble and to sunder. We speak out for life and choice. We march for the right as each perceives it, and the deepest questions are often voiced by a puzzled child propelled by wonder. A chance encounter with music wafting through open space will imprint the day onto that child's psyche and connect him to an old musician's face. Chicago Sound Bites Like ephemeral plants, City street events show up in plazas, along sidewalks, on bridges, whatever in the momentary scene catches bystanders' attention. Polish polka melodies from guitar, clarinet, and accordion celebrate Constitution Day in early May as descendants share their history with others lining Columbus Drive in this city of the big shoulders. Chinatown holds pop-up entertainment by women with an attitude, dressed in black pants and tops, tennis shoes and boots, ready to perform hip-hop dancing and stomping for an afternoon interlude. 
At City Hall Plaza, a crowd cheers and heckles marchers with bold signs supporting pro-choice. And several blocks away at the water tower, a cellist plays classical melodies while a little boy stands transfixed by the lyrical notes. Youth-powered skateboards clatter and scrape as they flash past Federal Plaza windows, reflecting jumps, turns, and leaps invented with ingenuity and desire to show off their agility. Even the Columbus Drive Bridge features a laughing man casting a wand filled with suds of swirling iridescent bubbles, perhaps to impart a bit of frivolity, a chance to escape the weight of the world and float on the wind. What he wants to see. On the metro train, a father reminds his son, remember to stay close to me. There are bad guys in the city. At Union Station, the boy jumps off his eyes bright with hopes for adventure. It's not just Millennium Park he wants to see, not just a museum. Before he's halfway across the Jackson Street Bridge, he pulls on his dad's hand and says, Where are the bad guys? I want to see the bad guys. His father cringes from the sound as a man on the bridge beats an old drum. Not a drum you'd purchase from a music store, but an oil drum a donation cup in front of him. The boy pulls his hand free and claps along till his dad jerks on his sleeve and says, Come on! The boy is surprised by the food trucks, begs for a taco, but his dad is looking forward to fancier food. The boy delights in watching skateboarders perform on a granite bench, doing tricks he hopes to learn some day. When protesters march by, smiling at a photographer who gives them a thumbs up. He wants to know what their signs say, a question that brings lies from his father's lips. Nor will his dad explain why a woman leans against a wall with signs the boy can't read pinned on a piece of cardboard, or why the man in the ragged shirt shakes a styrofoam cup. They don't seem like bad guys. They just look cold and sad. The blonde boy loves watching the black man who stands on a crate, blowing bubbles to bring joy to children like him and to childlike adults. He likes the fountains in Millennium Park, with water coming from mouths in the big pictures of people. Even more, he likes the big bean, distorting images of him and his father, and the way the sun glances off the surface. Stay close, his dad reminds him. So he says, I still don't see the bad guys. Across the plaza, he sees a group of girls about his cousin Sarah's age, he thinks. They are all dressed in black. He is surprised when they line up in rows, turn on loud music, and move like dancers he's seen on TV. He begins to tap his feet in time with theirs, but his father pulls him along as if they're in danger. He asks, are those girls the bad guys? His father shushes him and says, come along, son. The boy falls asleep on the metro train headed west. When he gets home, he tells his mom what he saw and did. When she asks what he likes best, he says, the music. I saw a man with something like a piano on his lap, but the best one was a guy who plays a cello like Sarah but his cello is empty. It just has strings. Dad tries to explain. It's an electric cello. No body, just an outline of the frame. A strip to hold the bridge and strings. The boy tells his mom, Dad let me listen a long time and I put a dollar in his bag. I want to go back to Chicago, the boy declares. It was so fun, but I never got to see the bad guys. <laughs> 